you guys what's happening. So, just picked this up on Amazon, and it was actually pretty cheap. It's a CR Touch. Got it on sale for 33 bucks. And actually, I wanted to put it on this printer here. I already have a BL Touch, and that's actually my custom. This is my uh, I designed this extruder system, but uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, actually I wanted to use this BL Touch for a different project. So I wanted to. I was looking for a replacement, and I saw the CR Touch, and I kind of liked it because it was like a like a black color. So let's get out of the box real fast. This way. So for everything I've read online it says it's, it's actually a direct swap for um, a BL Touch. It actually one of the other issues, one of the other products I'm working on is an Ender 3. That's why I got a specific Ender 3 kit uh, because it actually comes with brackets. So. I'm going to be taking the BL Touch and moving to that device. But I really actually like the color. Is it kind of, I don't really, I don't really like, like the white of the BL Touch. So it comes with the brackets. And I'm actually running uh, an SKR 1.4 board in that, in that printer. So I'm not going to be using the 5 pin cable. I'm going to be using that with the Ender 3 that I'm building. Um, but yeah, so typically for the um, couple screws. But for a crowd, I use actually a 5 pin connector for all their BL touches. Um, and then your typical, it's like for like an SKR or a typical BL touch would be like a two pin and a three pin for the servo pin and the power. But the connector should be exactly the same on the tip, so that's cool. So I'm hoping I can just, uh, you know, pop that out and pop that one in. Um, but the other thing is it feeds up here though. So, um, it feeds on the outside, so I might have to make some mods. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut that out a little bit to have the cable fit, but in the future, I'll just redesign this, just redesign the uh, mount to clear the uh, cable. So I guess I'll, I'll take this off and I'll see how far off I am here. But depth-wise, should be at the same action. The other thing I liked about this too is it actually had a metal probe versus a plastic probe. Because I've actually broken, uh, I've broken probes off before, you know going down and hitting hitting something on the bed, you know? But, wait, and it, when I designed this extruder system, I uh, created some wire management, so I gotta get that off there. Um, so I'm gonna have to pull it up, because it's a little bit different now. The, the wire's gonna be different, so I'm gonna pull the wire back to make it look cleaner. All right, so I'm gonna notch out this, uh, just take a little cut out here with my Dremel. All right, there it is. So a couple things I noticed is that the, uh, the probe actually goes up a little bit further, which I like. Um, so it gives me a little bit more clearance. Um, also another cool feature I noticed is that there's actually like an M3 lock. So there's, it's sort of like a, it held the M3 in place. M3 nut. I'm actually running lock nuts, but um, but it held in place. I didn't have to sit there and get because there's no way to get a wrench in there. So I wasn't going to be able to grab it. So that's a cool feature. Um, Alright, I'm going to probe this thing up. Get it going. Yeah, this should be a direct swap. Let's see. Alright, I'm going to the bed. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, it kind of sucks that they actually took out uh, BL Touch. Like, they were a partner for a long time, BL Touch, and... Well, I'm sure they still partnered, but it's, uh... You know, they're going to be putting a huge hurt on BL Touch. They uh, come out their own thing here to kind of take them out of the loop. Alright, first probe. Alright, that's a G28. Oop. Not good. So, it didn't probe right. As you can see, <laughs> I did my things there. That's actually why I have those versus the actual spring ones, is they'll come on down like that. Alright, I guess I'll do the self test on the BL test configuration for nothing like that. Okay. Definitely seems a little faster. Okay. Let's see. Deploy. I might need to lower this down a little bit, slightly. That was kind of weird, you know. Um, I'll go to the stove. It's up. Hmm. All right. Let's 
try the hum again. Motion, auto home. I won't even do a G29. Bother leveling my bed. If I can't even do a G28, then it's then it's since I'm doing a G29. If you're not familiar, G29 is actually like the word does the nine points. All right, how's that going? Let's see how this thing failed. I'm just curious to see what happens if I. Okay, it's not even activating. Oh, it came off again. All right, so maybe the cable is loose. I'm gonna try that again. Um, so that basically tells me because it basically because it operates the stove, the servo pin side of it is actually working fine, and the power, but. That's typically the ZN stop. So when, as it hits something, it actually it activates the uh, ZN stop. So let me try that again. Go down to motion, auto home. And before I even go into it, as soon as it comes down, it's got to hit it. Yeah, that should. Uh, Alright, so I think I'm going to start looking at Marlin. <clears throat> I'm thinking this thing might be triggering too fast. Like, Marlin can't figure out this thing's being triggered. So I might put some sort of delay on there. Or, uh, I'm going to have to try to figure it out in Marlin. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I could hook up my multimeter to it and see if I, it's actually getting, sending back a signal. But it's all actually, all, it's an electronic board internally, so it's not, it's not a direct, it's not like an end stop. All right, so I test the CR Touch with uh, this is a CR10 S5. It's a massive printer, and I also tested with Ender 3 with the stock firmware, and it actually worked out of box. So must be my uh, Marlin settings. All right, so originally when I configured my S Carrier 1.4 board, I configured it to the ZN stop and not the uh, servo pin, just because I can never get it to work on the servo pin. So, um, but that was probably about a year ago. Um, so I'm gonna move it back over to the uh, servo pin. I'll show you that. Alright, so I'm going to move this over here, I'm going to pull it out, this is the ZN stop, and I'm going to move it, ground needs to be on the closest side, and next to the actual other servo pins, there's, there's a two pin, I don't even know if you can see that, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it's right there, that black and white, white and black, that's the Beal Touch. Alright, got it working. So I'll go through the Marlin configuration, what I had to change to go from the uh, Z min plug to the uh, Z probe. Let's see here. It's kind of interesting I didn't. It's interesting that it doesn't pull up the plug. I mean, I do actually have fast going enabled. So it's not going back up and doing like a double check. Different than the Beal Touch. I mean, I guess I was messing with the Marlin configuration. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, I guess that's maybe the high speed configuration does it. So it actually makes the whole process faster. Um, it's actually in the uh, configuration advanced. But uh, all right, got a got a working CL or CR touch with the uh, S Carrier one four board. All right. So yeah, I'll, I'll uh, do the Marlin config. All right. So here's my Marlin config. So the first thing you got to do is you have to disable this thing right here the um, define use X min plug and go back down to here and you need to define this use uh, probe for Z humming and then you also have to define the pin so the servo pin for this specific board hold on a second I'm bringing up the picture Where is it? there it goes alright see it says pin 10 right there so that is, that's why you're defining that right there, because that's actually next to the servo pin, the probe pin. Um, this should actually be defined usually in pins, but 
for some reason I couldn't get it to work, so I had to find the pin here. Then I also had to disable this right here. That, uh, because then I actually had two different end stops. Um, so that's it. And then let me go back and I'll show you the uh, configuration for the, uh, the actually, so what I did actually have was uh, this high speed set. So if you actually had the high speed set, it's not going to go up and down and touch multiple times. It's going to go a lot faster and it's going to go down and just touch it and move on to the next one. So it's going to touch it, but it's not going to even like, go up and down and do it twice. It's just going to touch it down and move on to the next one. All right, so that's it. Uh, so if you were wondering how to get a CR touch working with an SKR board, it's still, like, what's weird is it didn't work with my, my setup. Um, just the way it was with the BL touch, I had to go in and make modifications to make it work. So, But if I took that same CR touch and I used the factory BL touch Creality firmware, we're fine. So I knew there was nothing wrong with the sensor because I tested it a, or tested it on a different machine. But all right, guys, hopefully this video helps somebody. All right, cool.